Hello, and welcome to a very special episode of the Best Games Period. Jack is not here this week. Daniel is not here this week. And as most of you know, when that happens, it means one of us is playing solo. But no, 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 not this time. Today we have a very special guest. At least, I think he's pretty special. My son Dylan is going to join me, and we're going to talk about some of the games that, that he admires, adores, loves, and maybe even feels are best games, period. Now, obviously, some of these games are going to be games that we've already talked about on the show. Um, we're kind of going to do a rapid-fire thing. So he's just going to bring them up. We'll discuss them a bit and move on to the next one. So, Dylan, welcome. Hello. Those of you that listened to the old, old show, the uh, Indian Mojo show, may remember that Dylan was on an episode once before where we talked about Pokemon. Oh, yeah. I don't know that Pokemon's going to come up today. I don't know that it's not. That's what makes it fun and interesting. So, Merry Christmas, everybody. And let's get started. First of all, Dylan, you got a new tattoo recently. Why don't you tell everybody about that? I got a tattoo of the Triforce. doesn't represent any specific game, but it represents the Legend of Zelda series, which I love very, very much. And some of those games will be coming up later. I think that that series is possibly the best one that I've ever had to experience. And it's your first tattoo, right? Yeah, it is my first tattoo. Fun fact, Daniel will never get a tattoo because he's terrified. He thinks they'll hurt. Did it hurt? No, not really. Okay. Well, there you go, Daniel. Suck it up, buddy. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool. I like the design. It's healing up quite nicely. It'll probably be the first of many. They're kind of addicting. Once you get one, you tend to want more. So what have you been doing on your uh, holiday break so far? I've been playing Zelda. Ocarina of Time. Ah, uh, yes. Ocarina yes. of Time. Did you know that Daniel has never beaten that game? Yeah, you told me that the other day. Isn't that hilarious? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So a 15-year-old can beat a game that a 30-something-year-old can't. So suck that up, Daniel. In almost one day. The best thing about recording without Jack and Daniel is I really get to make fun of mostly Daniel. He really has nothing to to say about it because he's not here to defend himself. So that could happen a lot. A couple weeks ago on the show, we uh, discussed the marshmallow incident. Oh yes, from from when we went when we first met Daniel and went camping. So I kind of want to hear your take on this story. Okay. So just just shout it out. Tell us what happened. My version. Your version. All right. So Daniel invited my father and I to go camping with him, and we went. It was fun. We went to this weird place that had a bunch of different cabins, and it was cool. So we were getting ready to have. Uh, have a campfire or something and i wanted a marshmallow okay i wanted a marshmallow so i grabbed the marshmallows that we brought ourselves after my dad specifically told me i could have one and i went inside went to grab a marshmallow daniel comes over he goes what are you doing and i'm like i don't know because i i didn't know i was very i was a little kid and I didn't know what to say. An adult was at my face yelling at me because I was taking a marshmallow that was mine. I didn't know what to say. So I was like, I don't know. And I'm kind of being sneaky about it. And it's like, well, what are you doing? And I'm like, okay, I'm eating a marshmallow. He's like, why? We're not having ready for s'mores yet. Put that back. So then, then, almost three years later, I go onto my Google Drive account. And for some reason, there are a couple of videos there of that camping trip. And I watch it. And one of them was when my dad was filming and Daniel comes out saying that I was stealing the marshmallows and they're joking about it. And I still, still think it's unfair. It, it, uh, how did <laughs> a video I recorded get on your Google Docs? That's I don't know. <laughs> that's weird. Okay. So have I told you how all that really went down and why he was upset? No. So he had, they had bought marshmallows as well. And they were in the cabin putting groceries away. And if, as you recall, there were a bunch of kids there, his girlfriends, nieces, and nephews, and cousins, and whatnot. And they all wanted marshmallows, and he told them no, that they're for the campfire tonight. And he didn't know that... Well, I wasn't there. <laughs> I, I'm aware. He didn't know that, that you had asked me for one, and I wasn't aware that he had told those kids no. So he came out and saw you eating a marshmallow and thought that they were the ones he just told those other kids that they couldn't have. 
But then, then you got really kind of upset because I didn't defend you. And, and when you're telling me the story before we watch the video, I'm like, of course I would have defended you. And you like pull out that video in no time flat <laughs> and the evidence is all there. And sure enough, I didn't defend you. I was like, oh, well, I guess you shouldn't be mowing them all down anyway. So, anyway, it was a uh, really funny. So I just wanted to follow up to that story because a lot of people commented on it. It's funny now. <laughs> it is kind of funny now, but are, are you over it? Are you going to hate Daniel forever and me to a degree because of it? I'm not going to hate Daniel. No. I might dislike him for some amount of time. <laughs> Can we get some sort of time frame, like 2018, 2019, um, Q4 maybe? 2032. Wow, that, that is quite some time. But well, Daniel, there you have it. He's tolerable. He is entirely tolerable. All right, so I kind of wanted to get that out of the way. So moving on, what is one of the first games that comes to your mind when you think of the best games period? For uh, you personally, not critically, not commercially, just something that you really enjoy. Mafia 2. Actually, Mafia 2 is a game that we had planned on talking about on this show a few times and haven't gotten around to it. Um, I kind of thought that might come up. As you know, it's one of my favorite games as well. What, what, are, you know, what are some things that stand out to you that really make you appreciate that game? Definitely the story. It's not like your average game story for your first-person shooter. It's not like this happens. You go to war and you shoot everybody and that's all you do the whole game. It's kind of how you evolve throughout somebody's life and their choices. Vito Scaletta, the main character, he goes through a change. He starts off as kind of a good guy getting back from the war and changes into a mobster that will do anything to make some money and help out his family and ends up getting screwed over a couple times along the way. Um, it's kind of a Grand Theft Auto-esque type well, of game. Uh, you know, maybe set yes. in the, the, the 40s, 50s. Do you consider it, I mean, do you think that's a fair comparison? Kind of through gameplay-wise, yes. But not story. Story, definitely, definitely not. not. Yeah. Did, so you finished the game, obviously. Oh, yeah, I finished it. And, and you collect, like, you collected everything, yeah. right? You did all those things, and that's not something you typically do, at least as far as I remember. What what separated this game from other collectathon type games? Because there was a lot of collecting in this game. Yeah, it didn't change. It like you could finish a story, you could go around collecting everything, and there'd still be always something else to do. Something I remember you doing that I also had trouble with. You had to drive a car off of the highway onto a roof to get one of the trophies. Yeah, and also to collect something. Yeah, which. You struggled with very much, and that was, I'm pretty sure, the last thing you had to do before you had to get the Platinum Trophy. Yeah, I had to go back. I mean, I had to play it a few times to get into the Platinum Trophy to collect all the... That game was, what, the movie reels and the newspapers? Is that what you collected? Uh, yeah. And you had to find all the cars, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, there was one car in particular. I don't know why, yeah. <laughs> but it took me hours and hours and hours to find it. And when I finally did, I was like, thank you. I think it was actually the last thing that, that I did to unlock the platinum trophy. So yeah, uh, I can, I'm not going to give my opinion on that game officially because we are still going to talk about it on, on the show proper, but you think it's the best games period? Oh yeah. So what would be uh, another one that comes to mind? Mm. Lego star Wars, the series. No, not the series. In particular, particular just, one, just the first one. Yeah. That's actually a good thought. We haven't, Talked about. I don't think any of the Lego games on the shows, and I actually enjoy them a lot. What what stands out to you with with, with that? Well, Lego Star Wars. It came out a, a while ago in on the PlayStation Two, and if I remember correctly, it was definitely one of the first games I was able to understand and play. It kind of sparked the interest for a bunch of different Lego game series. There has been many sequels to the Lego Star Wars games, ones that came out. Uh, not even that long ago, a couple months ago, a couple months back, and they're still making them. They're making. They also made Batman, Harry Potter, a lot of them, and Indiana Jones. Yes, and they just continue to they make continue some. to make some. And Lego Star Wars, it's different because it introduced a lot of elements on the PS2 that you couldn't do with a lot of other games. Um, it wasn't a first-person shooter. It wasn't anything like that. You could control different characters. You could play Star Wars. Just, the story as it's told in the movies 
kind of get the feeling that you're in Star Wars because you can create your own character and I think it's just a very good game. The one thing that stands out to me regarding that game it is it had drop drop in drop out two player co-op. Oh yeah. So it was one of the games that because you were pretty young when when you first oh, played yeah. it. We'd play it together. Yeah, yeah and, and it was some fun. But... Well, I mean, it, I always get frustrated. That had nothing really to do with you. But you like collecting everything. It, I, I did just, like collecting everything, like and at that point, you it. just wanted to run through it. I'm like, no, there might be something over here. Um, but like, we finished it, and then we started using all the cheat codes where you just got billions of studs oh, for yeah. like nothing, and then we ended up unlocking all the characters. We played the crap out of the game. Yeah. It really was a lot of fun. I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, the, the story is yeah. Lego, Star Wars. I mean, Star Wars. Star Wars. And it's not particularly a long game, but there is a lot of stuff to collect. Yeah, it's fun. And, um, you know, it plays very well. Mm -hmm. Like, it just, there's no... Replay value is great. Yeah. And... Yeah, there, there's no uh, big glitches or anything like that. It was It was an interesting and fun game. We talked about uh, you playing Ocarina of Time earlier. Oh, yeah. Would you consider that one of your best games, period? I would. Yeah? Yeah. And what's your favorite temple? Favorite temple? Yeah. Water temple. Mm. That's the one Daniel couldn't get through. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you've played it on the N64, Virtual Console, the... 3DS. Yes. yes. I mean, you've played it pretty much any way yeah. that you possibly can play yeah. it. So you've played the Master Quest. You've played yes. all those other things. So it's not like you just took the easy route out on the 3DS like I did. Yeah. Because that was Daniel's hang-up on me. Oh, says yeah. on the N64, it didn't have those particularly in the Water Temple. That's that's where he always kind of got. Uh, yeah, the Water Temple is different. Yeah, definitely. Um, not a whole lot more to be said about that game. We did talk about it on this show, and we all decided it was your best games period, definitely. How you, how you could think otherwise is beyond me. It's it's iconic. I mean, it's something that... It's that revolutionary. Will, yeah, that will be talked about for years and years and years. Is there anything more specifically you want to say about that? The game kind of sparked a new way into the Zelda series. Um, before the game, there were a lot of different titles, such as the first Zelda and Adventure of Link, all the way up to A Link to the Past, which is also a great game. They were all different than Ocarina of Time. They were, of course, 2D, uh, two-dimensional, and they played differently. Ocarina of Time it introduced story, it introduced adventure, a bunch of new items you could collect, a bag, uh, which I'm pretty sure has been done before, but not quite to the same extent. Yeah. It introduced a lot of new game features, and it evolved along the way up until now, for which the new game that's going to be coming out is going to be even better than before just which, because of which that you're pretty game. excited about oh yeah i'm very excited about it definitely so do you think it's going to be a big switch from the old zelda games no no <laughs> okay you're supposed to indulge me here. yeah i know <laughs> he's he's totally used to my dad jokes what other zelda games would stand out to you as just at least great games great games well of course the sequel to ocarina of time majora's mass but it's a lot different than which I kind of like about it. And the soundtrack for that game is beautiful. I love it a lot more than Ocarina of Times. The soundtrack specifically. Yeah, the yeah. soundtrack. Um, the game is very dark. It's something that I liked and didn't like about it. So, And, and you played a lot of the 3DS games like Spirit Tracks and Phantom oh, yeah. Menace. Did you... Phantom Menace. <laughs> Phantom, Phantom, Menace. Phantom Pain. Did you enjoy those games? I, I personally enjoyed them a lot. I like them, except they were a little too... Yeah, okay. And they weren't as long as some of the other games were. Yeah, okay. Um, you got any other things that come to mind? For Zelda specifically? No, we can move on to a new game if you want. I'm pretty sure I covered up Zelda for now. You played a lot of Skyrim. Yeah, so that was you, about must, to, you must enjoy that, that game at a minimum. Skyrim because Breath of the Wild sparked interest in for Skyrim. Skyrim's pretty good. It introduced a new way to play games. It was... People thought when it first came out it was going to be a lot like Dragon Age or something like that. It wasn't. It was more like... That, and that was your first Bethesda game that you really played. Oh, yeah. Played, right? Yeah. Um, I didn't really play any of the Fallout games, and I still haven't. I'm not Well, really but you didn't really play any of the other Elder Scrolls games either, though, did you? No. Because I'm not sure a lot of people thought it was going to be like Dragon Age. Well, 
I know a lot of people I knew did. Okay. But then again, they were in third grade. That, that's true. <laughs> it's amazing how long ago that came out yeah. at this point. Um, and it just came out again. Yeah, it came out again recently on PC and Next Gen. Um, Skyrim, and, you, and you, like me, you played it on PS3 and PC. I yeah. mean, you sunk probably at least as much time into it as I did. Yeah. And uh, something about that game that I particularly enjoy is the feature to uh, mod the game on PC. Yeah, that's great. Um, it's that way you don't got to dump all your loot everywhere. Oh, yeah. That was my favorite one where you could carry way more stuff. Yeah. And the mods for Skyrim, they don't have limits. You can get new races. Um, I remember one of the playthroughs I did, I did a complete Star Wars playthrough of Skyrim. Everything was revamped into Star Wars. You could have lightsabers. You could be races from the Star Wars. Just your mods. I pretty much did the same thing except Lord of the Rings. So, yeah. yeah that's The people that create those deserve more credit. Yeah, they do. And it's kind of sad now that the modding community is kind of dying in PC because a lot of the mod creators don't get recognition for what they do and people steal their code, Yeah, which... Yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah, it's a lot of work to put into it for little recognition. And a lot of those people don't really want monet money. I mean, it's not monetary, no. monetarily that they're they looking for. They just want to be like, hey, I did this. That's cool. What about maybe a game that not everybody else plays that, that you thoroughly enjoy? I know that you have some um, somewhat obscure titles that you've talked to me about in the past. And I'm like, huh, interesting. There was one indie game that I really liked called uh, Spoiler Alert. Mm -hmm. um, not popular at all. I think probably has about 600 downloads on Steam. And it's got an interesting feeling to it. Um, it's not a long game, but it's very fun. You, It's, a, it's pretty much just a side-scroller, but... There's something off about it. You play it backwards, which is cool. you got to revive all of the enemies that you supposedly already killed. And um, it's a lot more tricky than other side-scrollers. And it requires a lot of strategic thinking. And, yeah, I really like that game. Another one that comes to mind is probably uh, some of the Tomb Raider games. Really? I like, yeah, I like those. How did I not know that? I like those quite a bit. I just liked how you could... Pretty much the parkour in those games, I liked it a lot. Um, how you could jump across very big gaps with your... Whatever it's called. What's the thing she uses that hooks into walls and stuff? Um, her hook Pick shots? Up, line no, hook? I don't know. Whatever. Something yeah. like that. I like Quick those. shot is from Zelda, yeah. so I don't know. I don't know exactly what it's called, but um, so I like being able to do that with those games. So uh, interestingly, I mean, we like a lot of the same games, but some of the games I love the most, you know, I'm not a huge fan of, like Uncharted. Oh well, to be fair, I haven't really given Uncharted and all those games a chance. However, they just don't really pique my interest. Okay, and that's fair. That's fine. Uh, we talked about Assassin's Creed 2 as being one of the best games, period, on the last show that we did. Um, you played quite a few of the Assassin's Creed game, and you mentioned parkour. Yeah. And are, do you, are there any of the Assassin's Creed games you like? Uh, particularly, I liked Black Flag, but I very much disliked how much sailing you did in Black yeah. Flag. Okay. And did you ever play Assassin's Creed 2? I didn't play it, but I'm pretty sure I watched you play all of it. Yeah, you watched me play a lot of it. You did. Uh, let's see. What else? God of War? I don't think you played um, I played the God of War games, but they're not... I just don't really like those. However, that did spark something. Devil May Cry. I was going to say, I remember when you were like in kindergarten, I, was, <laughs> and I played Devil May Cry, and I... Thought I shouldn't let you watch me play it, but I did. Oh, and yeah. you made this book, right? <laughs> oh, I remember. you remember that? Yeah. So he had to make this book for an art project, and like, wasn't it Mother's Day? But they had you make it for me, since for whatever no. reason, maybe it was Father's it Day. It was no, I think that was before that happened. That was before that happened, actually. Yeah. I think it was just like parents together. Yeah. So one of the things was 
uh, something I really enjoy, and you were and you were watching my dad play double McCry, double McCry, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> double McCry, and like the teacher's like, "What is double McCry?" I'm like, "I have no idea." <laughs> and then I realized what I meant, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know," because I didn't want to tell your. I think it was actually first grade. Yeah. This is Birdsfield yes. that, that, that I was watching you play. Not just straight at M, but demons. Oh, and, demons you know. and everything. Like yeah. That. A lot of blood. Yeah. A lot of blood. Yeah, good stuff. Particularly of the Devil May Cry series. I did enjoy 4. That was really fun. The new game that came out that was just titled Devil May Cry, it's different. But I don't think it should be named Devil May Cry. Like, it's got the same names and stuff, but it's not really the same thing. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a reboot. Are you still playing Counter Strike these days? Yeah. 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 You've been playing that for quite some time now. I had a couple of years. Yeah. At least. Yeah. I like Counter Strike. It's pretty generic. It you shoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it does take some skill. It's a lot different than most first person shooter games. Definitely. Um, I suck at all first person shooter games. It's because you're blind. But maybe. Uh, you loved what Black Ops. You played a lot, a lot of that. Yeah. Um. I did. Okay. Um, I loved it when I was, like, maybe 12. Okay. And, like, Black Ops 3. I mean, you're only 15. I don't have oh, yeah. years and years and years to go back on, so I'm just yeah. trying to... Yeah, and, like, Black Ops 3, it was fun. I remember when the beta came out, I played it all the time. Like, I would not move from a chair playing Black Ops 3, and it was really fun. But... I, the games, they just get kind of old after a while. They're the same thing over and over again. And if you really want to do anything in them, you got to, like, join, like, a clan or something like that. Which, you know, I'm not really into that kind of stuff. Yeah. Are you still playing Destiny? Uh, no. Yeah. Ran out of PS Plus. Oh, you did? Yeah. You should have told me. <laughs> that happened, like, four months ago. <laughs> if you had PS Plus, would you still be playing Destiny? Uh, probably not, because a new DLC came out, too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, generally, these uh, non-specific titled episodes, we like to keep running at about a half hour, so we got about five minutes left. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Any burning desires you want to talk about? Something you maybe forgot? Forgot? Yeah. At the beginning, you mentioned Pokemon. Mm -hmm. There is one Pokemon game I would put in to the best games period. Which is? Which is Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Okay. Um, Why that one as opposed to others? Well, because you've played many of them. It's oh, not I've like that's the only one you've played. Almost all of them. Yeah. And Heart Gold, Soul Silver, it is a reboot of the Pokemon games Gold, Silver, and Crystal uh, on the Game Boy Color. And they ported it to the DS, redid all of it. And the reason I like that game so much is because. You can visit two different regions, not like any other game. You can visit two different regions, collect 16 badges instead of the usual eight. There are a lot more different things you can do after getting all those things, such as being Red, which is a popular character in the manga, the games, and even the anime series in one of the ports they've made. Um, you can go to a mountaintop, beat him. You can beat Baloo, who is his rival. Uh, and plus, red and blue there from the original game, so having that Easter egg into the game really made it kind of, okay, that's cool. Um, you play as the character Gold in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, or as the character um, Silver, and uh, you, you can do a lot of different things. You can go to the Pokalathon, which is basically just a bunch of different mini games. which because it was a fairly new game on the DS, they tried to put as much DS stuff they could in there. So you used your stylist in the Pokalathon, you could do a bunch of different mini games there, which was something that hasn't been done in Pokemon before. And one of my favorite features is that the Pokemon you had first in your party would walk around with you, which has not happened in any other game except for Pokemon Yellow. And I like that because... What happened was Black and White and Hard Gold and Soul Silver, they were being uh, developed on at the same time, but by two different teams. Um, and they were released around the same time. However, I feel like Hard Gold beat them by a landslide because Black and White was kind of a reintroduction to the series. And Hard Gold is a great game for any person to start out with. 
for both of mine. All right. Well, thank you, Dylan, for uh, mm -hmm. taking some time and talking about some of your favorite games. We always like to talk about Extra Life on this show. Uh, Jack writes articles and does game reviews for Extra Life. You can find those on extra-life.org. Post the show on Extra Life, along with many other places. Uh, Libsyn, iTunes, Game Informer. Daniel does a poll on Twitter and Facebook on the show's proper, uh, asking people whether or not they think whatever game we discussed is the best games, period. And Extra Life, if you don't know, is a gaming marathon charity. Uh, it's not even so much a marathon anymore. It's really just a gaming charity. They have raised millions and millions of dollars for sick kids at the Children's Miracle Network hospitals. All the proceeds go directly to the Children's Miracle Next Network Hospital. So if you want to find in, more information out about that, uh, again, go to extra-life.org and uh, donate if you can. And if you can't, spread the word because that helps as well. So this is going to come out probably the day after Christmas. So we want to wish you all a, uh, a belated happy holiday and a early happy new year. And Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on the dippity flippity. Did you get more wood? Oh, yeah. <laughs>